What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes, back again, and today we are doing a Super sub -ohm Tank Showdown. Holy shit, is that a mouthful. The three contenders that we have today is the TFE-12, the OBS V-Tank, and last but not least, the new contender on the block that is not out yet, but the Cloud Blaster Magnus, or the Magnus Cloud Blaster, I should say. In gold, what I've done in this video, by the way, to differentiate between three of them, because they do come in different colors, I have represented the silver with the TFP-12, Team Silver. Team Gold is by the Magnus Cloud Blaster. And Team Black is the OBS V-Tank. All right. In that case, let's get to it. But before we do, cue the intro. That is right, YouTube. Today we have the three contenders, the TFV-12, the OBS V-Tank, and of course, the Magnus Cloud Blaster. We're going to kick things off with the specs, starting with the TFV-12. The TFV-12 has a 6mm capacity. It is 70mm in height, 28mm in diameter, 27mm with the glass diameter, 25mm base diameter, and it weighs 91 grams. Not like any of that information really helps you at all, but it's good to know because other people do it too. Moving on, we have the OBS V-Tank. The OBS V-Tank specs are very simple. It is 26 millimeters in the base section with 64 millimeters in height and has a 6 milliliter capacity, but realistically, it's more like 5.2. Last but not least, we have the Magnus Cloud Blaster with a 5 mil capacity, weighing in at 66 grams, diameter of 25 millimeters at the base, and a height of 66.6 millimeters tall. Now that we've got the specs out of the way, that really, other than the actual capacity of juice that they can hold, has no impact whatsoever, although I don't know. I mean, if you guys really need to know the height of a tank, go for it. For me personally though, I have no interest in that when I'm looking at a product to purchase. Maybe it affects how you want to purchase a product, but for me, it has no influence on me. The base, of course, maybe it has a bit of an influence as far as how it fits my devices, but since I've switched over to the quad battery devices, Smoke GX350, the RX300, and the iJoy Maxo, those three devices pretty much handle all these millimeter, or all these base Sizes, no problem at all, fits pretty flush. So outside of that though, like I said, I mean the weight of it, I don't know, is that something that people care about? What, why does that matter? What? Anyways guys, let's just move on from there and talk about the pricing on these three tanks. The TFE 12 retails for around $51 Canadian or around $37 US, depending where you're going. I found it a little bit cheaper some places and a little more in other places. That seemed to be an average price point, so that's what I based it on. The OBS V-Tank, on the other hand, came in at $42 Canadian and about $30 US. Now again, same thing. I found it for a little bit cheaper elsewhere and a little bit more expensive somewhere else. That is pretty much just the average price I could find. And lastly, the Magnus Cloud Blaster, well, it doesn't have a price tag. That's right, no price tag yet. It's still not out yet from what I can see. I couldn't find it available anywhere, so I couldn't find a price on that. And it's going to be tough to say where the price point comes in. I'm hoping it comes in closer to the OBS V-Tank at around $40, $45 Canadian, somewhere in that range. Maybe even upwards of $50 Canadian, putting it nearer to the TFP-12, um, or around you know, $30 to $40 US, probably where it's going to end up landing in at, just to compete with the other two contenders, but it's going to be hard to say until the actual product comes out. Moving on, let's talk about the cost of coils for the TFP-12. It's first up, and it has a cost of about $22 Canadian, or about $13 US, for a pack of three coils. A little more on the expensive side, guys. So these coils, on my experience, let's talk about the lifespan as well while I'm talking about price. So the lifespan on these coils, TFP12, I'm getting about two weeks out of them, give or take, anywhere from about 10 to 16 days. So from just under two weeks to just over two weeks is about average, and this is just based on the TFP12 coil. I know there's other coils included with this. This entire review is going to be doing a head-to-head -head matchup with their main coil, the coil that's included in the tank, the coil that is there that most people are probably going to lean toward. Yes, there are other coils for this, and yes, they are probably a little bit cheaper, but this review is strictly based on the main coil that comes pre-installed. So, moving on from there, we have the OBS V-Tank at around $16 Canadian, or about $10 US for a pack of coils. That is, again, for three coils. So, again, you have those kind of cost per coils of about, in Canadian, you're looking at about just over $7 Canadian per coil for the TFV-12. And per coil for the OBS, you're looking at just over $5 per coil. A saving of about $2 per coil, so that does influ influence how some people may want to buy, especially going forward. And of course, last but not least, is the Magnus Cloud Blaster, which again is not out yet, so there's no cost in the coils for those ones either. 
And the biggest thing I have to say with Cloud Blaster, it's a little bit of a downside for me. And it's, it's on something that I kind of wish they wouldn't have done. But at least in my box, the coil that was included in the actual tank itself that was pre-installed was the RBA section. They did not install a proprietary coil or their own coils or, or I guess a factory coil. What they installed instead was an actual RBA section with no cotton, mind you. I know it's not a big deal for a lot of people. And yes, it was pretty apparent when I pulled it out of the packaging that it was the RBA section. But at the same time, not everyone's going to know that. And I think it would have been safer to install one of their factory coils instead of the RBA section and had the RBA section in one of the spare coil tubes that's included. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is, of course, the filling of these tanks. Now, this has been a big issue of mine with smoke in the past, and it's pretty much no different on the TFB-12. That small fill hole with the little seal on top, which, by the way, is there to make sure that it creates a vacuum so it doesn't leak out of the bottom. So it is an important seal. Don't get me wrong. Do not remove that seal, because if you do, it will just leak out the bottom like there's no tomorrow and just start wasting juice everywhere. But that being said, the one thing to keep in mind with the TFB-12 is the fill hole is still a little bit too small for me. I really wish I could find a way to make that fill hole nice and big so you can fit those 140ml bottles because honestly, with the way these things run through juice, you need those 140ml bottles just to keep up with these. So if they would have done that, I would have been much happier with that. There are unicorn bottles out there, there's chubby gorilla bottles out there. You can pick them up yourself. And what I typically recommend doing if you have a 140, transfer it into something with a smaller tip so it will fit in the TFB-12. The OBS-V tank on the other hand is beautiful to fill. It has that side fill function where you pop the top and then you just simply fill it up from the side. It fills up nice and easily. There's no spillage, there's no waste of juice. Big plus in my books. So big credit to the OBS-V tank for doing that. Now the Magnus on the other hand is very similar to a Kalito style fill. It has that kind of unscrew the top. You have two holes which you can choose from to fill to. Both of them are about the same size. And while it's a little bit tricky to get the 140s in there, it's still much easier than the TFE 12, especially if you want, want to create a pour stream and it just goes in no problem at all. So out of the three, the OBS V tank, I love the side fill option. I think that's huge, but I'm also a big fan of the Kalito fill style. So with that in mind, I think I'm going to have to give the fill style to the Magnus just because it has a more familiar feel to me and I'm still not fully embracing the side airflow, but that's just my personal opinion. If you like side fill, then you might like this one. And I think it just said side airflow. Ignore that, guys. Seriously, I don't know what I'm talking about right now, but you get what I mean. Last up, of course, we have to test the vapor production. And as I mentioned before, this review is strictly based on the original coil or the main coil that is kind of associated with these tanks. For the TFV-12, it's the V12 coil. For the OBS V tank, it's the V12 coil as well, or their version of the V12 coil. And for the Magnus Cloud Blaster tank, it's of course the same thing, the strongest coil they have, which is, I think, rated at 50 to 260 watts. It's going to be a juice killer, guys. So if you want to waste juice, these are the ways to do it. Those are the coils it's going to be based off of. What I'm going to be doing for you guys is doing a quick comparison of the three. I will be trying to use all three of them on the same device at the same wattage, which I've elected to choose 180 watts, which seemed like the fairest, or the fairest wattage for each of them. I will not be maxing up the coils on these either. I know that the uh, Magnus goes up to 260 watts. I know the OBS V10 coil also goes up to 260 watts. And of course, the TFV 12, which goes up to 350 watts. So there you go, guys. Yes, I could max it out, do 260 on the two, and then do 350 on the last one. But honestly, that's not really a fair comparison because very few people are going to be using these at their maximum wattage. A lot of people are going to stick to around the 150, 200 mark. And that's why I like to go with 180 watts. So here, we're th here we go. We're basically going to a mini cloud comp between the three of them and to see which one wins. I'll let you guys be the judge. I'm not going to judge it. I'm just going to start chalking clouds, and let's see if you guys can pick out a winner from that.
right, so based on all this information, the real question is which one do I pick as the winner for me personally? And I say personally because I have a different opinion based on other people. So your opinion may vary. Some people are going to like the TFP12 better. Some might like the OBS tank better. And some might like the Cloud Blaster better when it does come out. Out of the three tanks, which one am I choosing as my winner? Honestly, it's a very close, it's, it's very close, neck and neck, last minute stretch kind of thing. And it's between the OBS V tank, which has massive airflow. And ironically, the Magnus Cloud Blaster, which has much more restrictive airflow. And between the two of them, I would pick either one of them. But if I had to pick a winner for me personally, I like a bit more of a restrictive hit. And I found the Cloud Blaster delivered a more restrictive, more flavorful hit. And especially for someone like myself who does struggle with getting flavor anymore because I'm so used to it, I have like constant vapors tongue basically. And the Cloud Blaster did provide a better flavor with that more restrictive hit. The best way to put it is that it feels more like a dot mod Petri RDA with that tight flavor, the tight airflow that just brings out the flavor in, in every single juice. That's what I'm gonna give it to the Cloud Blaster and it's gonna be for me over flavor, over clouds. So with that in mind, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I hope to help you guys pick out which one you like best. And if you do wanna enter in the giveaway, ah, see what I did there? Some of you may have already turned off, but the ones that stayed may have remembered the giveaways going on. We have a giveaway for a TFE 12 and a Magnus Cloud Blaster here. So if you wanna enter the giveaway, all you have to do Leave a comment down below in the comment section. Make sure to be a subscriber of mine. And of course, make sure to like the video. That's pretty much it. If you want to share the video, I appreciate it, but it's not necessary for the contest. So I don't like doing that kind of pressure, but make sure you like the video at least. Make sure you're a subscriber of mine, please. I do appreciate all of you guys. You guys are all amazing. You guys are great support for me, and you guys keep me motivated to bring out more videos and constantly improving the quality of each of them. So, that's going to do it for today. Thank you all again so much for watching. And until next time, happy vaping, YouTube.